first of all, the easiest thing is uh, to recognize that this is a liquid fuels problem and that there are something, there is something like 50 to 100 trillion dollars worth of liquid fuel consuming equipment in the world as a whole. It's a huge number. What am I talking about? I'm talking about cars and trains and airplanes and uh, ships and uh, uh, golf carts and uh, uh, forklifts and, uh, and, and, and so forth. There's just an enormous amount of equipment out there that will not work unless it has liquid fuels. Um, what that means is that if we start to try to change that, it's going to take us a long time because of realistic production rates of change, because people are going to have a hard time buying new equipment, discarding equipment that in fact has useful life in it. The problem it comes down to the fact that you just can't change on a dime. So we have to have liquid fuels and we're going to have to have liquid fuel supplies for quite some time as we phase over into a, a, a different world. Um, there are, because this is a liquid fuels problem, uh, wind energy and uh, solar energy and uh, nuclear power and so forth, which have uh, both advantages and disadvantages, are not going to be able to solve the liquid fuels problem because you cannot plug in existing airplanes or cars or trucks into a, a power outlet and uh, have them operate. They're not built that way. In other words, it simply does not work. So people have to understand that this is a liquid fuels problem and that a number of these other things, while many of them are useful, are not going to work this particular uh, problem. Uh, those are very important fundamentals and people have to understand that. And there's a lot of people, and particularly policymakers in various places in the world, that do not understand those simple fundamentals and hopefully the book will provide them the kind of insights that they need to uh, be able to think the, about these problems more realistically.